Okay, today is uh, Saturday, January 6, 2024, and we've got wings. We're starting on wings, so probably going to break these videos up into, I'll just call them phases. Phase one, phase two, phase three. And I'll call this phase one because what we've accomplished so far is I've got ribs attached to both the front and the rear spar. Um, and, and the way that process worked was the, you start with the ribs and essentially each rib has, most ribs have something that needs to be attached. And so we go through all the ribs, of course, peeling the plastic off all of these things. I think peeling the plastic off is about, my God, 20% of the, this build project. But once you get the plastic off everything, you clean, deburr, and get the ribs all organized, then it's, uh, we go in through each rib and attaching anything that needs to happen to that particular rib. In this case, we've got a flap hinge bracket that, that's been assembled and attached to that rib right there. Um, there are torque tubes in here, and then they've got these uh, grommets for that. Um, there's some over here, I've got bell crank for ailerons. I'm gonna get, a, I'll go through the, a little bit more about these wings here in a minute, but I just wanted to talk about that. So you, you, we you do the ribs and then we assemble the um, rear spar in the rear spar channel. And the, this spar, the, the front main spar comes completely assembled from the factory. So that's not, there's a few things that has to happen. I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. These are the twist uh, jigs that are on the root and tip of each of the wings and um, really make the assembly process so easy and keeps everything lined up perfectly. Um, what I did was, and I've heard some of the other guys talking about, eventually when, the, when, when we've got the final product, we're gonna use, whoops, we're gonna use an AN7 bolt. And the AN7 bolt is going to go in there's eight different locations across uh, the, the wing root. But the challenge is with these AN7s, these holes, the precision on these holes and the precision on everything on this kit is just absolutely amazing. The precision on these holes, it's, it's a press fit. So I'm not gonna use these bolts for the uh, twist jig just simply because I, I, I wanna preserve that, that, that fit. And so instead I'm just using grade five, seven sixteenth bolts. And they, they're, the tolerance is just a little bit uh, less than the AN7, but it does, it does work for this application. So only using those uh, grade five bolts, never gonna use any sort of grade eight or grade five bolts in the final assembly. Um, it will always be these AN, uh, these AN bolts. Um, a couple things, tools. So part of what has to happen with this main spar is there are countersinks that have to go through. So we'll go through each, actually the, the plans show where to begin, where to end these countersinks, but uh, countersinks go down through each front and, or excuse me, top and bottom, both the left, this is actually the right, right wing, and that's the left wing. And this countersink tool is what we use for that. So you put that on the end of the drill and it gives you the right countersink. Um, and that way you never go too far and you never over countersink the hole. It takes a while to get it to exactly where you need it to be. And then I just go along, this is not a, um, this is not a flush rivet, this is a button rivet. But it's, I'll just go along with the flush rivet after each of the holes just to make sure I've got the right, uh, the right hole setting so I didn't go too far or, well, like I said, I, I, I would not go too far, but I may not go quite enough. So uh, that's how that works. There's, there's actually 600 of these, 175 on each side, top and bottom, both wings. So we did, uh, or I did, over 600 of those. So that's the countersink tool. Uh, you know, previous video I talked about these quarter inch bushings and I'm still finding uses for this. And what I'm finding a, a really great use for this now is I'm using these to, if you can see that, I put a rivet on the end of that. Let's see if I can get it better. So I'm basically, I'm gonna put it up here. Wherever I gotta push a rivet in, uh, let me put it right here. Wherever I gotta push a rivet in, I've been, I've been using this bushing material, quarter inch bushing material, because quite frankly, my fingers are about raw. I mean, I'm getting, 
I got a blister here and on the end of my thumb, I can hardly touch anything because it's so raw because I'm just constantly pushing these rivets in all, I mean, God, there's thousands of these things. And so after a while, like you get a stubborn rivet and it doesn't want to go in. So you're fighting it, fighting it, fighting it and your fingers just get ate up. So I'll take this, uh, I'll just take that bushy material, push on there. And if I have to, I can come by with a little persuader here and just give it a couple little taps and get it to go through. I'm not ever going to hit it too hard that I'm forcing it, but I can just take that little hammer and kind of tap it in place. If that doesn't work, uh, if, if I can't get the rivet to go through, then I'll run the drill through and clean it out that way. I just, I really try to avoid the clean out uh, with the drill bit, it, at least not on my first attempt, because that way I know I'm getting that, that hole exactly the size it needs to be. Um, and then one other thing here. So uh, I've, had to, I've had to drill out a few rivets. So this is the drill. And what I'm doing, the process that I've, I've really started using works very well for me, is I will drill out the head of the rivet until the head pops off. And it usually sticks to the drill bit. And then I'll stop at that point. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll take this punch and I'll punch wherever, wherever the head of the rivet was until this back piece falls out. So I really am I'm trying to avoid drilling all the way through the rivet. I, instead, I just want to take the top of the rivet off the head of the rivet off and then come through with this punch until I can really, it might take half a dozen or a dozen strokes with the, with the punch until it finally pops out. But I know that I preserve the, the integrity of my hole by doing that. So, all right. So, um, what I'm doing with the, the wings, I think for me, I've heard a lot of guys say, just do one wing at a time. And I, I've got the room to do both, both wings. And so the process I'm following is I'll start with the right because the plans, the manual uh, re refers to everything from the right wing. So I'll go ahead and do my assembly on the right wing and then just take that over, take that, whatever I'm working on, take it over to the left wing and do that part of the wing. And I just did that all the way through. So I'm never getting ahead on this wing and then coming back, and, you know, maybe two, three steps behind. I'm always on the same step on both wings, but I start with the right wing first. Um, some of the things that are a part of this I think is interesting. Since there's no skin on it, it you can kind of really get an idea of what, what's going on here. I'll explain some of this. The reason why we got so many ribs here is that this is at the root. And so this is the point of egress and ingress. Uh, and you're going to be walking on top of this portion of the wing to you know, access the canopy, to get into the cockpit. So that is all reinforced there with extra ribs for foot traffic. As we go further out, uh, outboard uh, with the wing, then the proper spacing starts to come in for the, uh, the center ribs and as well, you'll, they'll be in this area here, we'll have um, the flaps and you can see the, the flap hinge brackets are here. We've got three of them. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is the flap torque tube. And then the other thing is this, these uh, grommets here, the big ones at the bottom, that will be the, the push rods for the ailerons. And then we come down to this side and this is the bell crank for the push rod. And then this push rod here actuates the, uh, the, the, the aileron. So um, that's one of the things I really like about this airplane, that, that there's not a lot of cables. I believe the only cables in this plane are with the rudders. Um, I love the uh, push rod aspect of this, um, just because it's a lot more, the, the, the touch and response with the airplane is gonna be really, uh, you know, awesome. This is the rear spar, this is the rear spar uh, channel, and this is where the skin will end here on this piece all the way through here. And you see how it attaches on the bottom. It's just a single, um, and the, thing, the other thing I like about this kit is all of the bends that come from the factory are just dead on. So that's, everything's bent. Um, there's no bending, we don't, I don't have to have a break here to bend any material. So uh, I just pretty much just establish the where it goes and then put put the cleat goes in and then come behind with the rivets and there's just, there's, there's no interference. Everything lines up perfectly. So, uh, that's the rear channel for the, um, back of the skin. And I've got some nose ribs here. This will be the bay for the landing lights out towards the tip. Um, there's a tie down. I don't know if you can see it here. There's a tie down right there for the end of the wing. Um, and the reason why there are no additional ribs along this main spar is because this is where 
It, it, it's actually the leading edge of the wing is the fuel tank. So I probably will call that my phase two, or excuse me, phase three of the wing construction, just because the next step is going to be skinning the wings. And so skinning is the next thing I'm getting ready to do since all of the rib assembly up to this point uh, is as far as I can go. So there will be, the skinning is gonna involve uh, getting the dimpler situated, putting it back into place where it should be repositioned. Um, and then there'll be a lot of dimpling that needs to happen and start skinning. And I'll report back when the skinning is completed.